This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. In reality, life is crazy. I'll tell you that. That's the beginning. For you to know, in reality, life is crazy and I'll tell you a little bit why. Tell you some, some of the craziness. In every generation, there is a different challenge. Now there is the baby shark challenge, no, I'm kidding. In every generation, there is a different challenge. And that challenge is fit to, to the people of that generation. So, if there was a generation of of people that were whiners always crying and complaining and not happy and always like being negative so to that generation they brought certain tests that those people will have to work on that attribute to find themselves full with gratitude and appreciation and and positive now in generations that people were too lazy so the creator made those people to run they had to run in generations that people couldn't even remember who they were and and what their purpose was so he had to bring the creator had to bring those pillars of light to reveal the faith and to teach faith and every generation is different in a way than the rest and that's why the righteous people the leaders of every generation are totally different than the leaders of the different generation of the other generations now I explained it a little bit last week that when a person's faith is complete so he can see the truth clearly he doesn't have no doubts and he's always recognizing the message of the Creator to him and he understands exactly what is the divine will of the Creator from him and he's able to hold Hashem to, to get into the truth in every situation and situation but when the person is falling into the illusion of this world while so to speak sinning forgetting about the Creator's real existence in the world so he's falling into a fake dimension of fake reality and in that fake world he's trapped in physicality always there are obstacles and there are issues and there are blockings and there are things that seem to him like those things are denying the existence of the creator in in his world in his illusion delusionary world now when the person is falling to a worse place even than just sinning so he's falling into hastara shebetoch hastara to a hidden place that is even hidden from his awareness like he's falling to a place that he doesn't even know that, that the Creator is hiding from him he's falling into a place that there is no way out from that place it's called hastara shebetoch hastara even the fact that the Creator is hiding his face from him is hidden from him so he doesn't even have the desire, the will to search for the Creator now that's the worst case, that's the most problematic situation now what happens in the mind of a person compared to the illusion that takes place outside 
that when the person is falling to that darkness of not recognizing the Creator in his life, so in his imaginary way of thinking while dreaming that he is in reality, what that really happens to him is that he is falling with his thoughts to a world of imagination. Now, while thinking that he is experiencing reality, really in reality he is just falling into imaginations. Now, he thinks the Creator doesn't love me, but the Creator stands and loves him. He thinks the Creator won't provide my needs, and the Creator is about to send all his needs. He thinks to himself that he won't have a share in the world to come, but there is a huge amount of endless bounty that is served on a silver plate just for him, just for you. Just in your mindset, you fell into a place that in that place you are suffering from denial, you're suffering from lack of faith, you don't have the ability to recognize the godliness and the holiness of the Creator, and you are in a trap of illusions and imaginations and those are the clouds and and it's the darkness those are the the husks and the coverings that are blocking the eyes of a person from seeing the truth instead of every moment of his life to remember that he needs the creator and that the creator is the one that supplies everything he needs he needs to call his lawyer, he needs to fight with that person, he's getting offended from those words and he's getting destroyed and beaten because of that situation. Instead of just being pushed in every situation toward the Creator that is providing those situations just to build his character and to fix his attitude and his approach and to straight him up to the real goal and real purpose of your life and it's to be humble, it's to be simple, it's to be a believer. Now, where all of that illusion take place? Only in your mind. In reality, the reality that is surrounding you is 100% supervised by the Creator. The Creator never left His creation for a moment. For a moment. He was always there, He's always it. He's always inside of it and surrounding it, wrapping it and filling it from inside. He is your soul and He is the coverings that are covering you. He is coming in the voices of people around you. He is the clouds, He is the wind, He is the rain, He is the fire, He is the mountains, He is the animals, He is the river, He is, the, he is everything, He is the ocean, He is the seas, He is everything in this world. There is nothing else except of Him. Just that his honor is covering him. His honor is his outfits, those are the coverings, and they're covering him now. Because of his honor that we are not worthy to recognize him because we sinned, so we're seeing him covered with his garments, with his coverings, with his cloaks of honor, with his amazing outfits that he's wearing, that we won't be damaged by his magnificent and gorgeous light. And as much as the person falling into those illusions and sins and drifting away from purity and clear and simple understanding that there is no one except of him, that's how much he's gonna suffer from those coverings that are blocking and shading on the light of truth now, in different generations, like we said before, there are different tests. In our generation, what that happened to us, and that's the main challenge that we were facing, is not lack of faith. It's the lack of faith in miracles, in the individual supervision. To believe that there is a Creator, it's not such a problem in this generation. Many people are ridiculously religious. Many people are like that. Many people, they're claiming to have faith and they do believe. If you ask them, they will be ready to die for their belief. 
they're even willing to commit suicides and they're willing to put um, um, bombs and, and to kill thousands of innocent people for their belief. And they're claiming to believe in God, but that's not a complete faith. A complete faith is only when a person is also having faith and also he's aware to the signs that the Creator is sending to him in his life. You understand? It's not only to open a book and to buy everything that is written in that book. Because you can misinterpret what is written in that book. Two people will open the same Bible and both of them will take the verses to different angles, to different places. And one will be closer to the truth and one will, will, will just be sick with his deep and sick understandings and he's like very very far away from truth thunders you need to listen to the thunders that are coming to say something in Likutem Moran Rabbi Nachman of Breslev is saying that thunders have been created only for one purpose to straight up the heart of a person that your heart will be straight up honest not to make lies and stories and following twisted heart just to straight up yourself and to understand there is a creator and he's talking and his voice is the voice of thunders and with that voice of thunders he's rolling in the world and straightening our hearts to believe in the creator is not only to claim to have faith oh i believe in god I believe in, in Hashem, I believe in Allah, I believe in whoever you want, however you want to call Him. In the Lord, in the Almighty, everyone can call and find the name. It's true, there is one God, we believe in one unity, we believe that there was and is and will be only one and there is no one except of Him. And you can call Him in any name that you want, you can call Him the Cosmos, you can call Him uh, infinity you can you 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 can call him your grandpa it's not important how you call him the main thing is that you will listen to his voice that you will open your heart to listen to the voice of the individual supervision on your life and while a person is refusing to listen to the voice of the individual supervision on his life so he can claim to have faith but really to be very far from the truth. He can hold himself as a believer but to be so far from faith that as a messenger so to speak of his religion, of his faith, he will go and destroy people. He will go and, and kill innocent people. He will go and humiliate everyone that is holding different, uh, different, in a different approach, different way than, than his faith. And you don't need to be radical and, and, and vicious and cruel to kill each other to destroy each other's life. Like it can be in the same house to people that even decided and, and chose to live their life together and in the end of the day will go in different ways and, and, and will um, and, and will um, will bring out different um, information even to their children Things that can make many disagreements, many arguments, many miscommunications and also to bring the people that listens to two people that are spreading different wisdom to make them confused and to make them lose touch because they want to find that unity that's been talked about, that's been discussed always and if the opinions are going to different directions even the listeners, the children, the followers, the students can, can be drifted in, in different directions and it is creating dividings in the mind of the student. He cannot follow that, those teachings. He must have simple method to follow. Now, in our generation, like I said before, the main thing that we lack of is 
the lack of faith in the supervision of the Creator. Like I said, to be a believer, it's an easy thing. I believe, you just need to say it, you can post everyone that believes in God, comment Amen and that's it. You are a fantastic believer and that's it. You also have your social media effort for the Creator sacrifices of our generation and like it, you're done. Everything is perfect. That's a joke. A real believer like we said is a believer that holds in an inner work of listening to the voice of Hashem of the Creator and trying to follow the Creator's will and private guidings to Him in His life. And when you are attaching yourself to your inner voice, to the voice of truth that is supervising on your life, that when things happen to you in your life, you're changing yourself corresponding to those things that took place in your life. You're learning you are growing, you're understanding, and you're tuning yourself, and you're uplifting yourself, and you're opening yourself to higher um, in quality and in, in, in the amount of, of information. And you're aiming your heart to higher goals and preparing yourself to higher levels. While doing that, you will pass the challenge of this generation. So. What that I'm trying to say in few words now, I will say it, that even to the real righteous people of this generation, even for them, it's a big challenge because on their shoulders and on their back, lying a whole order of, of souls that are attached to them and in every movement of those righteous ones they're not moving alone they need to take all the train with them so the generation challenges are first of all coming in front of the righteous one that is in the head of the generation and he needs to deal with all the doubts and with all the negativities and with all the lack of faith in the private supervision and to break it for the sake of his followers of the rest of the um, of those wagons that are attached to him and, and that he is helping them to find their direction. Now, that's a very hard mission, but by the help of those surroundings of that righteous man, he is able to again and again uplift himself from those challenges and to climb above it and to reach the goal and the purpose of his generation and to complete and accomplish it. Now, there is something very, very deep in it that when a person, for an example, if someone was sick in a certain sickness, so after having that sickness, so because that he recovered from that sickness, so now he's immune, I think immune, that's the way, the word to say. Now he will have the power not to be sick in that thing ever again. When a person now is facing a certain challenge in life, so by facing that challenge and, f and, and fixing that problem and solving that issue, he is taking over, He's, he conquers that destiny and it becomes to be his own. Means not only that he won't fail into that trap ever again in his life what that will happen to him in the future to come is that he will have the ability to provide the results of his victory to his followers so if we said that for our generation 
the main lacking of our generation is the lack of faith in wonders and in miracles because life are so covered with nature and nature explanations and everything is based on science and you can find answers to every question in Google and like who needs faith who needs the supervision of Hashem like you can find your needs in, in every store online you can buy everything you need you don't need to pray for anything you don't need the supervision of Hashem you can just like buy it on Amazon or on eBay it's like in 48 hours it's it's in your house you don't need to see the Creator because it's all covered with nature but when the righteous people of our generation will break that challenge for us and will lead us to that place of believing and recognizing the supervision of the Creator, what that will happen is that our faith, our completion in that aspect of our work means to believe that there are miracles, that there is an individual fantastic supervision on every moment and moment of your life, that understanding will be the reward of our effort. We will all be rewarded in that perfect faith. It means that we will experience wonders and miracles in our lives. What that we will enjoy from will be the peak and the highest result of believing in the power of miracles and wonders that is above nature in the Creator. And we will see His wonders. And that will be the Redemption Day. That we will complete our faith in the Creator in that aspect of believing that He is above nature now. I want to tell you a story. I'll tell you a story. One time, there was a righteous man. And that righteous man was walking at night in the forest. And he was lonely, and he was lost. And he was walking like a blind in the darkness. And while he was walking over there between the trees in the woods, suddenly that lack of happiness and joy started penetrating into his heart. And he started doubting himself. Why am I going in that darkness? Why am I walking in that dark, lonely path on my own? While thinking on all those negative things, Suddenly he heard voices of animals and whispers between the branches of the trees and that fear start penetrating even deeper into his heart, start questioning, will I cross that night, will I finish that road, will I get to my destiny and while walking and keep on progressing in, in his way, he found himself slowing his progress because of his fear. And the voices became stronger and the sounds became closer. And suddenly he started feeling that he's being chased by those voices and that they're surrounding him from every angle. And he was not able to continue from the fear that was surrounding him from every angle, from every corner. And he stopped his move, wasn't even able to move, was too scared to make another step that the sound of those thin branches that will break under his footsteps won't invite and call all the predators of, of the night. And he was standing like that, frozen and, and shaking and cold in the middle of the night. And like we know, when you're reaching rock bottom, there's only one way, and it's up. 
and he had to find that place inside of him to call Hashem, to call Hashem from within. And he closed his eyes like he never had any other savior in his life before and was calling Hashem, except of Hashem, and he called Hashem in a very honest prayer and just ask, please Hashem, let me count on you. Let me remember that there is no one except of you. And while asking that simple request, he realized that he was not asking for his physical needs. Like, while he was walking, he was afraid of animals, he was afraid of predators from those whispers between the branches. But now when he found himself alone in his prayer, what that he was asking for from within, the voice of his prayer was pronouncing a different re request. He didn't ask to be saved from the animals. He didn't ask from Hashem to bring him to his destiny. He asked Hashem, please let me count on you. And when he realized that the voice that came out of his mouth while explaining his heart was a voice that is expressing the lack of faith that he was holding, suddenly all the dark picture that was surrounding him became very bright and clear. He realized that while he was walking in the darkness, foreign thoughts of sadness and despair started to penetrate into his heart. And when he listened to those inner voices of doubts and sadness, impure voices of despair, the voices of the outside world started to rise and suddenly the animals sounded closer to him and the whispers he could feel them and until and 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 the fears were taking place in his outside reality that's at least what he felt means that when he was letting his inner voices of fears and lack of faith to sound themselves to make themselves exist and he listened to them so the re reflection of his fears attacked him from outside and when it been clarified to him that everything that took place around him was only the result of his fear and that understanding came to him because of his pure and honest prayer he opened his eyes and start walking with no fear like it was the brightest day and he couldn't care less anymore not about bears and tigers and wolves and he didn't thought about the no animal there was nothing else except of Hashem and of course he crossed that night and he reached his destiny and everything was very clear after that that righteous man finished his way he got um, back home from his journey and he wrote a very deep explanation to the verse Hashem Sfatai Tiftach Upi Agid Tehilatecha Hashem please open my lips, my mouth, my lips and my mouth will praise you. He wrote that the real explanation of that verse is that a person is not able to pray until the Creator will put prayer in his mouth. Before we're standing to pray that whisper quiet prayer of Shemona Yisrael, we're saying, Hashem, Sfatai Tiftach, please God, open my lips and then I'll have the ability to praise you. That righteous man interpret that verse to say, if you won't put words into my mouth, I won't pray. I won't be able to pray. Means that the prayers that are coming out of your heart are the prayers that Hashem, the Creator, is putting in your heart. You must listen to your individual prayer and that's the way to recognize the Creator in your life. 
by having an individual prayer that's how you will recognize the individual supervision on your life because the house of Hashem is being called the house of prayer my house will be the house of prayer will be called the house of prayer to all nations and also to our house to that house to the house of Hashem we're calling Beta Bhira, the house of the free choice of choice. It's not the chosen house, it's not the most it is, but that's not his name. We're not calling that place the most important house while calling it Beta Bhira. We're calling it the house of choice. What does it mean the house of choice? It's your ability to choose. When you're able to choose, when you're not scared to choose, when you are confident to walk up to your heart and to follow your heart and you know exactly what is the right way, when you are attached to the individual supervision of the Creator because you're recognizing it, because you can see that He is supervising on you, because you can see that He is backing you up, because you can see that He is supporting you, because you see and you recognize that He is feeding you and helping you and assisting you and, and, and guarding and all, and all of your surroundings are only coming to open ways for you to reattach yourself back to that simple faith that it's all Him. And that there is nothing except of Him in His world. And to achieve that understanding for that, we must bring ourselves into that house of prayer. To have that simple prayer, talking to the Creator like we're talking to our best friend. And I'll explain to you why. Why is that individual prayer? Why the Bodedut is the tool that without that tool, we cannot accomplish and complete our faith in miracles, in wonders, in the private supervision of Hashem on our life. Why? Because when a person is falling and failing in his life and his lack of faith, so what that happens to him in that moment is that he is losing touch with the Creator. Let's say now that a friend came and start rebuke him and start insulting him and telling him horrible things about his behavior and his manners and his smell, whatever, breaking him to pieces. Now, if you lose touch with your faith, if you don't recognize that that conversation now is a, con is a conversation that is coming from the loving source of rebuke, that the verse is saying, Et asher yohav Hashem yochiach, God rebukes the ones He loves, if you forget that while that person is rebuking you, so you're gonna develop anger on that person. You'll be frustrated from his rebuke because you don't get the real message that the Creator is telling you something about yourself. Hey, listen. Hey, open your eyes. Hey, I'm just talking to you through that person for you to learn because I believe in you, because I'm counting on you, because I know you're dedicated, because I know you want to improve, you want to work on yourself, so I'm rebuking you because I have faith in you, because I want you to learn and I know you're able to. That's why Hashem is rebuking us and teaching us. But when you lose track with that, when you lose your mind and you fall to your selfish sadness, and to your laziness, and you lose your temper, and you lose your happiness, and you lost your faith. So what that will happen to you in reality is suddenly you have an enemy. Someone is hitting you, someone is knocking you down, someone is rebuking you, insulting you, hurting your feelings, not considering your feelings and your emotions, and all over you, and attacking you. And suddenly the world becomes to be darker, and more cruel and vicious and you have obstacles in life and you have difficulties in life now what's the way to fix this problem there's only one way to take that experience that moment that in that moment you lost your faith in the supervision of the Creator and to do it bodhidut on that moment to take that scene that situation and to speak about it with the Creator. 
to pray an individual prayer on that situation and to say to Hashem, Hi, how are you doing? What's going on? Why is it happening to me in my life? Why that person is attacking me? Why is he shouting at me? Please let me know what's going on. What was he saying? Let me listen to his rebuke. Let me try to understand why it took place and why especially in that time and why just before I had to do this and why just the, why he chose to say those things that stabbed me like sharp knives, why he was doing that to me. And while talking, you will understand one thing from the other. Suddenly, because you're praying, the Creator will put certain words in your mouth that will help you to understand the private supervision of the Creator on your life in that situation. And by having a discussion, a friendly conversation with the Creator on your life experiences, because of that, you'll find, you'll have the ability to recognize His individual supervision on you in that situation. That it was not your friend at all that was talking to you. He was not stabbing you it was Hashem that was hinting you and the reason that he was hard with you because it was only because you're not listening and for a long time he's trying to call you in a gentle voice and you're ignoring and many signs and many hints were being sent to you on the waves of the sea and on, on the wings of, of, of the wind and you were ignoring all of them all the whispers and all the hints you rejected so he had to scream at you he had to take your head off that you won't be able to ignore his loving voice that is trying to save you from your negativity and from your laziness and your sadness. Now, this is why while choosing to pray an individual prayer to do simple hit bodedut on your life, by that you can complete your faith in the supervision of the Creator. Because while talking to Him like you're talking to your best friend, you will recognize that His godliness is surrounding you and that His individual private supervision is taking place on every moment and moment of your life. And by reminding yourself of that, Clarity will catch on your life, at your life, and you, all your life, will be a mirror of godliness and will reflect the light of the Creator instead of all those dark coverings that are blocking His light. The way to do it, and that's the way that I'm doing it, is that I am dedicating a certain hour every day for Hidvodadut. And I'm reviewing all my day since my last Hidvodadut yesterday until my today's Hidvodadut. And I'm just reviewing all the day. I'm not judging myself and not criticizing myself. I'm just looking. And while I'm looking, if I'm recognizing a certain lacking, I'm talking about that lacking with the Creator. If I feel I did something wrong, I'm asking for help. I'm asking forgiveness. I'm asking for help. I'm asking for advice how to climb out of my darkness from my narrow places that are constricting me and, and blocking my life. And if I see wonders and miracles and wonderful things that I'm enjoying from, so I'm expressing my gratitude and I'm asking to have the ability to share and to spread that light between all of my beloved ones and everyone that wants to believe in, in the Creator. And I'm just like, for an example, if I did hit Bodhidut yesterday night, so I'm going to remind myself of my yesterday's hit Bodhidut. And if it was a good hit Bodhidut, so I'm going to thank Hashem on that hit Bodhidut. And if I was lazy while doing that hit Bodhidut, I'm going to ask Hashem, please let me pray with more passion, with, with more faith, really to remember that you were there, listen to my prayers. And then let's say that after my Bodhidut, I went to pray Mayriv, the, the evening prayer. So I'm going to say to Hashem, 
I will remind myself, was I praying in a synagogue or in my house? Was I connected to the words while praying or wasn't? Was I aiming while I was standing Shmona Yisrael? Did I have the right intention while saying Kriyat Shema? And I will mention those things to Hashem and will tell Him, listen Hashem, please help me. Yesterday's Mayriv was not the best prayer, but again, thank you for letting me pray. And I appreciate it and I want to pray more. Please let me pray today in a stronger way that my heart will be more attached to you, more connected. And that's it. After my live, if I was eating something, I will discuss that. If I had a conversation with my wife, whatever. Next morning, way I was waking up, way I was sleeping at night, day, day later that it was this morning, how I woke up, how I was praying, what I was doing, what happened to me, break breakfast, what, like every single thing that happened to me, I will mention it to Hashem. And I will try to recognize the hints, the individual supervision on my life in those moments. And by that, I'm uplifting my life to that place that I'll remind myself that in every situation, I'm one with Hashem and Hashem is one with me. Even in the moments that I forgot about Him during my day, that I was too hungry to remember Him, that I was too angry to remember Him, that I was too tired to remember Him, and I broke into myself, and I failed in my lackings, in my weaknesses, I will take those dark moments of my life and I'm going to peel them off from the coverings, and I'm going to reveal and unleash the sparks of holiness and godliness in my Hit Bodedut, and by that, we'll recognize and will complete my faith in the wonders and the individual supervision of the Creator on my life. I hope you got that message. I bless you to have complete faith in yourself, that your self-esteem will go high and higher and higher to destinies that you never even dare to dream that they exist because of being so wonderful colorful and pleasant and that all your prayers and requests will be answered immediately amen can you hear it so thank you we hope you enjoyed this video very much please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world for more please visit amuna.com may your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings amen